Welcome to the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast, presented by the Beef Cattle Research Council. The most popular content from beefresearch.ca, available on the go. Before we get into today's episode, a quick message from the BCRC. Carrying capacity, also known as grazing capacity, is the amount of forage a specific pasture produces that is available for grazing animals. Determining a long-term sustainable carrying capacity for a pasture is a key component of balancing forage supply and forage demand. To help producers assess and manage carrying capacity, the BCRC developed the Carrying Capacity Calculator, which is available online at beefresearch.ca under interactive tools and calculators or by clicking the link in the show notes. This episode features the BCRC Science Director, Dr. Reynold Bergen. Hi there, I'm Reynold. This research on the record article originally appeared in the April 2024 issue of Canadian Cattlemen Magazine. It's been reposted on the beefresearch.ca site with the publisher's permission. And today I'm going to talk about passing the torch successfully. So legendary forage breeder Bruce Coleman will be formally inducted into Saskatchewan's Agriculture Hall of Fame this month. Now Bruce's first research job was with McGill University and their forage breeding program had collapsed and they hired him to bring it back to life. And so with no breeding lines to start with, Bruce had to start completely from scratch and it took him 17 years to develop his first variety. Now, over the course of the rest of his career, he went on to develop 24 new forage varieties before he ultimately retired from the University of Saskatchewan. So if you do the math, that means that he averaged zero new varieties per year for the first 17 years, and then he averaged one new variety per year from then on. So the point is that forage breeding has an incredibly long runway before it takes off, and so it's important not to lose momentum. So when Bruce was nearing retirement, the beef and forage industries wanted to make sure that his forage breeding program wasn't abandoned. So a few years ago, the Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association, Saskatchewan Stock Growers, Saskatchewan Forage Sector, the BCRC, Provincial Government's Ag Development Fund, and the university all worked together to make sure that Bruce's position got refilled. Now, the good thing was that there was a great candidate already waiting in the wings. Now, Bill Billigatu had been Bruce's grad student, and so he'd learned his forage breeding skills from one of the best. But Bill didn't grow up on a Canadian cattle or forage operation, he grew up in Mongolia. And that made him a natural fit for the inaugural class of the BCRC's Beef Researcher Mentorship Program. Now, our mentorship program is designed to match up new forage cattle and beef researchers with Canadian beef producers and industry mentors, then they'll help them get familiar with how Canada's beef industry works with what producers need, how to communicate with producers on their level, and how to connect their research expertise with industry priorities. So we lined Bill with a mentor up named Aaron Ivey from Ituna, Saskatchewan. And Bill has gone on to maintain that relationship, but also to develop a really successful research and extension program in his own right. And I'll I'll talk a little bit more about that later. New researchers like Bill also bring their own valuable skills, experiences, and, and perspectives to the table. So if you look at a map of the world and you put one finger from each hand on wherever you are, wherever you're raising cattle in Canada, and you move one finger either straight east or straight west across that map of the world, eventually your finger is going to get to Mongolia. And that's where Bill grew up. Mongolia is an enormous place, and it's at virtually the same latitude as Canada's cattle country. The Mongolian steppe has a very similar landscape to the plains and foothills of Western Canada. Mongolia's climate is very similar to ours. Closely related forage plants grow in both Mongolia and the Canadian prairies. Most of Mongolia is still pasture land, actually, and it has an incredibly long history with a rich livestock and grazing culture. And in fact, Bill grew up on horseback in a family of nomadic herders. 
his family still raises livestock back home. And when, when Bill sends them pictures, they're never totally sure whether he took those pictures in Mongolia or in Maple Creek. You know, both places look so similar. So when Bill came to the University of Saskatchewan, he didn't just bring academic qualifications. He also brought his deep understanding of forage and soil and livestock and grazing management and how important those are to producers. He hit the ground running and the beef industry has supported his forage research and breeding program. And, and here are some of the, the highlights. You know, so what he's done so far, you know, he's released some some new varieties. So CDC Tisno is the first variety of Timothy grass ever released in Western Canada. Now, Timothy's a relatively minor crop in Western Canada, but it does work well in areas that are prone to spring flooding. And, and we do have some of those. Now, Tisno was the highest yielding Timothy variety in recent field trials in Quebec, and it is available from Nutrien Ag Solutions. CDC Torsion Meadowbrome was released in 2020, and it's been licensed to Brett Young Seed. Now, that variety was, was selected for higher yields and faster regrowth, and it has out-yielded Fleet Meadowbrome, especially in the dark brown and, and black soil zones. AAC Torque Hybrid Brome Grass was jointly released by Bill and Bruce in 2018. Now, hybrid bromes combine meadow bromes' superior yields and regrowth with smooth bromes' superior digestibility. AAC Torque has higher yields than both AC Success and AC Knowles, and it's available from Brett Young Seeds. And finally, CDC Salt King is an extremely salt-tolerant hybrid wheatgrass that combines blue bunch wheatgrass's height and leafiness with the high nutritional value and salt tolerance of quack grass. But, you know, don't worry, it, it does also, when you cross them, it tones down quack grass's tendency to spread all over the place. Now, Salt King is available from Nutrien Ag Solutions, and it has good forage quality. It has better ergot resistance and higher yields than AC Saltlander. CDC Salt King is currently being multiplied at downy brome free sites in northern Saskatchewan, and it should be available for sale from Nutrien in, in a few years. So what does this mean to you? Well, the Canadian beef cattle checkoff that you pay helps industry groups like the BCRC ensure that key research programs continue and that new talent gets hired and mentored by producers like yourself to do research that'll support your long-term productivity and profitability. Bottom line is that starting from scratch, it took Bruce 17 years to develop and release his first forage variety. By continuing the University of Saskatchewan's forage breeding program, Bill's been able to continue Bruce's legacy and put out five improved varieties, including a forage barley, in less than 10 years. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can find all relevant links and information at beefresearch.ca or in the show notes. The Beef Cattle Research Council is funded by the Canadian Beef Cattle Checkoff and strives for excellence in the production of Canadian beef, cattle, and forage through research, innovation, and extension. Tune in every Tuesday as the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast delivers straightforward insights, expert information, and a wealth of practical knowledge for Canadian beef producers. Subscribe now.